this video, I'm going to show you how to create a time lapse from a series of photos without having to use something like Adobe After Effects or Premiere all on a Mac. So one of the things that I realized as I recently moved into a different office was that my background is ever changing. And that is because, well, it's a real background, not because I'm technically changing it. And so one of the things that I wanted to do was add a little bit more spice into some of my videos, pumpkin spice, if that's your style, but something that would just add a little bit of a transition and kind of showcase the background, particularly now that it's just kind of a staple or will be a staple in a lot of these videos. Now, traditionally, a time lapse is going to be something that you use to show the passage of time. So if you do YouTube videos or really videos of any kind, and you need to be able to show a setting that has a long passage of time in a short period of time in the video, and a time lapse is a great way to do that. Now, if you're not already familiar with what a time lapse is or how it works, if you already do know and you're kind of getting impatient, click down below to skip directly to the tutorial. But if you're not already familiar with what a time lapse is, essentially a time lapse is a series of photos that you stitch together to create a video, essentially. So I'm not gonna create a tutorial that walks you through how to actually capture a time lapse. There's way too many cameras out there and way too many phones and most likely way too many other tutorials here on YouTube that you can use to figure out how to do that. Today, we're only going to be focusing on a piece of software that makes it significantly easier because as it turns out, the part that I was having the most challenge with was actually producing the video. So I was able to go into Lightroom and edit all my photos. I was able to export them all. It was really easy to snap the photos and to configure my R5 camera to take all the pictures. It was just producing the video in something like After Effects or Adobe Premiere for me at least was kind of a nightmare. So if you're wanting to do a time lapse, hopefully this will make your life a little bit easier. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how to produce a time lapse video from a series of photos using a piece of software called Glue Motion. Okay, so I have a folder here of exported photos. There is going to be a total of 406 photos that the camera has taken automatically thanks to its time lapse mode. And so this is just downtown Boise, the view from my office. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these photos and we're going to stitch them into a video that will take place over time. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up glue motion, click choose folder, go ahead and drag that edited folder full of photos. Go ahead and click open, click continue. And there we go. We see instantly it's already kind of taken those photos and it has started the process of stitching them. So we can go through here and create some transformations. So if you want to be able to rotate this or flip it, or you want to change the aspect ratio, I personally am going to do none of those things because I want to do a lot of my editing in Final Cut Pro. So if you're just wanting to create a time lapse, even to just share on something like social media, a lot of these tools might come in really handy for you. Like for example, you're able to actually go in here and adjust the white balance, motion, noise reduction. This is all stuff that I did in Lightroom because I like some of the tools they have. They're a little bit more professional photo editing capabilities in something like Lightroom. But if you want to just do some quick touch-ups and you're not necessarily gonna be using this professionally, they've got a lot of these tools kind of built in. I'm not gonna mess too much with this. I'm just gonna get right to the frame rate portion, which is going to help determine how long or how short the video is. Okay, so what we've got here is, this is actually already set to pretty much exactly how long. I technically want it to be about 10 seconds. But here is where you get to either compress or expand the amount of video or the amount of photos. So the more photos that take place per second, the shorter your video will be. On the other hand, the less photos per second, the longer your video will be. So you can just aim for a specific length of the video but I personally, rather than judging based upon the length of the video, I like to judge 
to make sure that it actually goes the speed for the look and feel and style that I'm after. So I already know I want it to, I've already kind of gone through this process once. So I already know I want it to be about 10 seconds because I've kind of seen beforehand what this looks like. But all I want to do is go ahead and click generate preview and it's going to go ahead and take all those photos, render them, and then generate a nice lower quality video for me to actually reference to see if this is going to look how I want it to look. Okay, so now that it has rendered, let's go ahead and click play. And it looks pretty good. We've got the traffic moving. We've got the clouds overhead. This is about the speed I want it to go. If I go too much slower, I think that this is, it's going to look kind of too choppy. Whereas now it, it does look kind of choppy, but not to the point where it looks fake. Plus I'm going to put some blending in this in Final Cut Pro. And if I were to go too much faster, I think that too much would happen too quickly and then it wouldn't be really useful. Any less than 10 seconds is a little bit too short for a clip like this, particularly if you're gonna be putting music or something over the top of it. Okay, so that looks good to me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the export settings. Now this is all gonna depend upon how you're going to use this particular video. I don't want this for tables or frames. I want to export a video. We'll say this is my time lapse. Choose where I'm going to export it. I'll export it to the desktop. I want this to be an MOV, but you can do MP4 or something else. I want this to be ProRes 422 because that's what that's the native mode in which my Final Cut Pro file will be. But you can you have a lot of options here as well. So we'll keep that. I want this to fill the aspect ratio and I want it to keep the original resolution. So this is not going to be a standard video size like 4K. I'm going to crop this or be doing some cropping to this in Final Cut Pro. But if you're exporting this because you want to upload it to YouTube directly or you want to upload it to Vimeo or another video platform, you do want to make sure that you pick, you know, 4K or 2K or 1080p or whatever size you want this video to be for the video format. So again, all depends on how you want to use it, but I'm going to be using it to import and then use later in Final Cut Pro. So go ahead and click export content. Go ahead and give that a few moments to finish rendering. And there we go. It's finished exporting. We'll go ahead and open that and take a look. And there we go. We can see that my video file has been exported successfully and I am now ready to import this into Final Cut Pro or use it for whatever I need. And that's pretty much it. Just one last quick tip that I wanted to give to you if you happen to be shooting on a DSLR camera. This probably won't matter as much if you're using a phone and software that is dedicated to a time lapse because they're probably gonna handle this for you. But if you're using a DSLR camera and you're pretty new to it, so like for example, I shoot on the Canon R5 and there's other, you know, Sony and Nikon cameras that do have the ability to capture time lapses. What you want to make sure is that you are not shooting in auto. This is a huge beginner mistake. I recommend pretty much never shooting in auto anyways if you're looking to get into DSLR camera photography or videography. It's good to know a lot, a lot of what the features on the camera does and what they're for. But it, particularly if you're shooting a time lapse, one of the things that can happen if, for example, you have the ISO set to auto, that's going to determine the lightness or the darkness of the image. Well, if the sun goes back behind the clouds and then comes out again, well, the camera is going to adjust the ISO or it's going or the aperture or the shutter speed to try and get an average balance of color and brightness for that image. And if you have it doing that every couple of photos, then you're going to end up with this flickering mess that looks crazy and doesn't make any sense by the time you're done when you export your final time lapse. So instead, you want to make sure that you shoot in manual, that you fine tune all your settings, your ISO, your white balance, all those things are set so that they don't change throughout the course of your time lapse. That was just a really quick aside, but hopefully you found this video useful. In terms of the piece of software itself, they do have a free version available on the App Store, but if you do use the free version, just know that it will have a watermark when you export your video. So you'll have to pay for the pro version if you're gonna be using this for pro use. So if you're gonna be using this on your YouTube channel, or if you just don't want the watermark at all, you're gonna have to pay for it. But if you just wanna play around with it, you can use the free version. I am not sponsored by this particular company. It just so happens, like everything else, to be a piece of software that I found useful and I like sharing with you. So as always, if you found this video useful, 
be sure to hit that like button, share it as well, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.